Are you willing to invest in a place that has upside down homes? Yeah. That's on this property hunt. Stay tuned. Welcome to this edition of Property Hunt. My name is Sarah Hadi Devresh and I'm joined today with Inal Koo. Thank Thanks you for, for coming in. And I was talking about upside down homes. Are you going to invest in a place that actually has topsy turvy sort of living? Doesn't sound very stable, does it, Enoch? So we're talking about Sabah. Okay, so Enoch, you grew up in Sabah, so clearly you're going to talk all the great stuff about Sabah, aren't you? You're going to sell it to us, right? Let's talk about where Sabah is for you guys who don't really know. Yeah, it's Malaysia, yep. but it's not really in that area where you know KL and everything. Else. Yes. So uh, Sabah is actually East Malaysia. Uh, most of them probably know us by Borneo, mm. so we are the north uh, topmost of Borneo Island. Uh, Sabah is actually East Malaysia. Right, and how big is Sabah? Do you know, like, is it really big? <laughs> it's uh, really big. Uh, among the towns, we actually normally travel by plane. Uh, among, oh, really? <laughs> yes. The town itself? Yes. Okay, yeah, I did see it on a map, and it was quite big, and I saw Singapore, I was like, <laughs> can't even see Singapore. Yeah. Why Sabah? So far away from everything that I know. Hmm. I know it's nearby to Brunei and stuff like that, right? Correct, correct. It's just next to Brunei and uh, Sarawak, which is the other state, uh, which is also East Malaysia as well. Right. So why Sabah? Why, why are you trying to get people to go there? It's, it seems to be so out of the box. But anyways, that place has actually been slated to be one of the top four places in Malaysia to invest in. Yes, there's four hotspots in terms of property investment in Malaysia and uh, KL, Penang. Johor and now Kota Kinabalu, Sabah. Uh, we've got the second busiest airport in the whole of Malaysia. Second busiest airport? Yes. Okay, so people are just leaving, right? <laughs> it's so busy because everyone's just leaving constantly. Uh, so there's, there's arrival, we've got about 14 international direct flights uh, around Sabah. Because Sabah is strategically located among all the countries like Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, Hong Kong, Taiwan. China. Wow, that's a, that's a lot to absorb. Yes, uh, basically Sabah is very much driven by the oil palm industry, the plantation industry and also tourism. And uh, last year, in terms of tourism, we've got about 2.8 million arrival of tourists to Sabah. And uh, Sabah, in terms of population, is probably about 3 million plus. So you can imagine the amount of people coming to Sabah is about 2.8 million. It's almost, you know, it's quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Recently, they also have a new industry, the oil and gas industry. Oil and gas now, wow. Okay. Yes, so that's going to bring in a lot of billions or so to Sabah. So the Peninsula Malaysia developers or a lot of investors are starting to take notice of Sabah. Hmm. And uh, that's why uh, it's one of the four hotspots in terms of property investment right, uh, right now in so Malaysia. So you're saying that the economic sort of status of Sabah is really growing. That's why people should start uh, putting their eye, yep. setting their eye on Sabah. Yeah? Yep. What sort of houses do you get there? Uh, you have public housing? Yes? Uh, we have a bit of public housing. Okay. I think one thing that Sabah can offer to a lot of people is that we, we are not like Singapore where we have so much developed buildings, etc. We are more uh, ecotourism. And a lot of investors or people who come to Sabah is mainly because we've got the highest mountain, the highest mountain in the whole of Southeast Asia. Which is? Uh, Mount Kinabalu. Uh, yes, <laughs> Mount Kinabalu. Yes. Uh, we've got the sea, clear blue ski, uh, really? sea. So there's not many places in Southeast Asia where you get the mountain and the sea. So for a lot of uh, people who believe in feng shui, uh -huh. you know, if, if at the back of you is the mountain and in front of you is the sea, that's perfect feng shui for a lot of people. Right, so, but you don't get that view from like everywhere in Sabah, right? Presumably, because it's so big. Yes, right? yes, There's definitely. probably like just one area where you get like the, the sea and the mountain Correct. as well. Correct, uh, which is the uh, capital, which is Kota Kinabalu. Yeah. Okay, so how often do you see this sort of investment, uh, sort of sentiment in Sabah? Yeah, so some of them will probably buy to rent, but most of them will actually buy to keep, uh, I believe, you know, because the prices there are relatively uh, affordable. If you want to say cheap. <laughs> yeah, if you come from Singapore currency, it's really, really affordable. Okay, how to buy. affordable it's us? In Ringgit, uh, how much would a normal home cost? Yeah, if you talk about condominiums, uh, we are going about five, six hundred thousand up to a million. So it really depends on the range. But mm -hmm. see for a, a property, a condo which has got such a nice seafront, going for maybe 800 to a thousand ringgit per square feet. So for a lot of people, that's very, very attractive, especially the Hong Kong people. Oh, Hong Kong. Because we've got direct flight to Hong Kong. What, what would you say the percentage is like uh, in relation to your locals versus people who have come in from outside and are living in Sabah? It's still very much driven by the local market. Okay. The uh, that's why I'm here because a lot of foreign investors 
uh, probably are not aware of Sabah. And uh, I think when they discover Sabah, uh, their heart, they will leave the place, but their heart will still be in Sabah. That's how nice the place is. Yeah. I think for a lot of property investors, uh, we would like to go to emerging markets. Emerging markets. Uh, markets that are relatively new and there's a lot of rooms to grow. Mm -hmm. And I, I see that. Uh, I mean, Kuala Lumpur and Penang, it's uh, maturing. Uh, people are very familiar with that. But, you know, I'm a property investor myself and I would say that I would rather choose a place where there's it's an emerging market. Uh, and I see more upside in that sense. Mm. So when do you think that this whole status is going to change from emerging to emerged? A market? How long are... Uh, just give us an opinionated view, yeah? <laughs> Maybe like 10 years, 20 Probably, plus? probably 10 years, but w one thing I know, it, it will be very tough for Sabah to be uh, like Singapore, you know, but uh, it's got a different attraction. People like the city, you know, they won't, they won't probably like it, but you know, people come to, to invest in Sabah, it's just like a second Bali, you know, it's okay. tourism, it's leisure, it, they're happy, you know, you don't get a lot of skyscraper, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just pure relaxation there. So can you give us, can you rattle off a couple of names of developments that people maybe can start looking at and start Googling? Because we do intend on going to Sabah <laughs> eventually, one of these days, and with help from Enoch as well. Yeah, there, there are a few high-end condos, you know, uh, just a turn, uh, Riverson, Riverson project also, uh, they've got the latest uh, medical tourism, they're trying to create medical tourism in Sabah as well through the coming of Glen Eagles Hospital. Ah, okay. There are a lot of big players, you know, from SP Satya, uh, Dijaya and also Asian Pac. Right. These are the few big companies who are mm -hmm. in KK right now. Is this like a competition going around in the States? Like, you know, they have Penang, you have um, KL <laughs> and Sabah and everything. So are you guys like secretly like competing against I each other? You are the same country. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> There's a secret competition going on, I right? wouldn't say there's a competition, but I think we are segmenting ourselves to different to meet the needs of different uh, investors. Mm -hmm. So KL has got its own attraction, Penang, Johor, which is closer to uh, Singapore and Sabah, which, which is by itself. So it's probably a little bit more exclusive. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so how many investors do you know who are already there from Singapore, let's say? I would love to know more, <laughs> uh, but... Yeah, uh, you do. Okay, come and tell us. <laughs> At least we know one person is investing in Singapore. Actually, a Singapore company actually went to Sabah and developed uh, develop a Sutra Harbour, which is one of the biggest, uh, largest integrated resort. Uh, oh, it's an IR? Uh, yeah, it's, it's with uh, all the marina, the uh, condos, the uh, golf course, everything. So the Singaporeans has been going to Sabah uh, very actively the last 10 years actually. How long do they have to keep their investment there? Is it going to be really long term or, you know, because in Singapore you can keep something for about five years and you will mm. see capital gain like sky high. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, in a place where land is not so scarce, mm. stuff like that, it would take much longer time. I think Sabah provides you a more stable growth, I would say. It's uh, growing but slower, but it will slower, be slower than Singapore. But like I say, it meets different needs uh, for, for the investors or even people who are just buying for home. And that's word from Enoch. Thank you very much for coming in, taking the time to tell us about more Sabah. And uh, hopefully, we get to go to Sabah one of these days. It's in the planning. It's just Do come. Of course, and you'll take us around, right? <laughs> Seafood. S <laughs> doesn't know I turn vegetarian. But no, <laughs> it's fine. All right, thank you very much for tuning in next time. And hopefully, we'll go to Sabah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.